Mm. Why doesn't God fix some of this stuff? Yeah. Why doesn't God completely just wipe out some of this negative stuff that's going on in this season? There are times in each of our lives that we struggle with what God allows to happen in our lives. This situation I'm in, man, I don't like it all. Mm. Lean over to your neighbor and say, it's real this morning. This condition that I got to deal with that has me on my heels. This calamity that has my heart broken and got me wondering about myself. And knowing that nothing can happen without God's permission. All right, right. It drives you to struggle within your spirit. I, 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 uh, uh, when we had the uh, funeral on Friday, I, I, I was privileged to, to take one of the generals of, uh, of the kingdom. Uh, I had him ride with me, and that's Pastor Dr. Galen Ford. Amen. And we were sharing, just talking about life, and, and I told him, I said, well, you know, Dr. Foreman, we don't talk about the struggle. Uh, he said, you know, Doc, I, I had some other things I wanted to do with my life. And I never thought that some of the stuff I've been through, that I would have to go through. Yeah. 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 And I said, you know, I said, you know, Pastor, we 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 talk about the will of God, but we don't tell people that sometimes the will hurts. Oh God, I, I need to talk to some real people today. Sometimes the will of God. Now look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't say, "Let this cup pass from me," because he didn't want. Oh my God, because it was okay. He said, "Let it pass from me," because I don't want to do this. Uh, Have you ever been in a situation, in a circumstance in your life where you didn't want to do this? I don't want to go through this. I don't want to have to deal with that. I, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to deal with this. And I, and I can understand now that if God was limited, I can understand that if, if, if God could only do some things, I can understand that he had to get permission from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I could understand if he wasn't able, then I could be a little bit more, more settled in me. And, 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 uh, come on, he's an all things kind of God. Yes, God. Yeah. When he's God alone, meaning that he's God all by himself, so he answers to nobody outside of himself. Right. And then you told me in Sunday school that he's sovereign, meaning he can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Yeah. I struggle to do to him, to do for him what I need to do. Oh, there's somebody on your road that has been silent this whole service. Because there are some things going on in their life that have placed a muzzle on their praise. Ah, God. It ain't because you didn't speak to them. It ain't because that you, uh, they, they walked in here and somebody didn't run up and hug them. No, the reason why they've been silent. Yeah. It's the same reason that Israel asked the question when they were in captivity. How can we sing? Uh, yes. The Lord song in a string. Yes. Uh, can we be real, real this morning? Lean over to your neighbor and say, I ain't never been here before. Mm. I ain't never been here before. I ain't never hurt like this before. I ain't never went through this kind of pain. I ain't never been here. I 
wish I had somebody that would just be honest this morning and say, I've never been here before. Because of the way I feel. I feel justified in keeping my praise to myself. Until God does something that pleases me. Because the church told me that we praise God for what he does. But they didn't tell me that sometimes what he does, I'm not going to like it. Oh, uh, allow me to set the record straight. If you don't mind, I'd like to preach for the kingdom. Yes, we praise God for what he does. But if he's the object of your praise, we should praise the Lord not based on him pleasing us. But based on what pleases him. Now I realize that God is always moving. And God is always doing things. Matter of fact, he has already finished what he started. And we are living in the manifestation of his work. In other words, he knows how this thing is going to turn out. But we don't. So we see in the moment while God sees in eternity. We look at it, but God looks beyond it. Do me a favor, help me preach this message and lean over to your neighbor and say neighbor. We look at it, but God looks beyond it. So the question becomes, at what time in the grand scheme of things should we praise God for what he has done? Well, one thing we've got to consider is that the one who created the moment and the time beyond the moment is God. And God has done it all. So if the moment is not pleasing and we hold our praise, then we are not truly praising him for what he's done. It's a partial praise at best because we have not experienced all he has done. I feel like sometimes God looks at us and says like Pat and LaBelle, if you only knew. If you only knew what I have for you on the other side of this trap you're going through right now. If you only knew what I got for you next. If you only knew that I'm not through yet. If you would listen to your faith, you would praise me for what you haven't seen yet, trusting that I only want the best for you. Uh, lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he only wants the best for you. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, praise him because you trust him. Oh yeah, that's another level of worship. I don't see it yet, but I trust him. I don't have it yet, but I trust him. I don't like where I am right now, but I trust him. I trust him because he's already done what is necessary in my life. He's already fixed the problem I just met. He's already made the way before I experienced the difficulty. He's already defeated the enemy that just jumped up in my face. So he wants to give him an eternal praise even in the moments of my struggle because I haven't seen all that he has done. Oh God, I don't know about you, but God has fixed some stuff in my life that I didn't know about until it was time for the revelation and he did it in such a way that I can't praise nobody but God. I wonder if there's anybody in here that can't praise nobody but God. You were down to your last time. God made a way. You thought you wasn't going to be able to make it through this but God made a way. I wish I had somebody in here that would just throw your head back and tell your enemy you shot your best shot but I'm still here by the grace of God so I've learned to praise God at all times because he's already been in all my time 
Oh, y'all missed it. I learned to praise God at all times because he's already been in all my times and placed a blessing in the times that I'm just going through right now. It's this revelation that we see in the episode of Epica Time in the life of a true worshiper by the name of David. And I got to tell you that David was not a worshiper molded in the experiences of good times. But he was a worshiper molded in the experiences of pain and calamity. It was David who experienced the pain of being overlooked by his father. Yes. It was David who experienced the calamity of being misunderstood by his family. Yes. It was David who experienced the struggle of being the first person in a second position. Yes. Oh God, can I just tiptoe through your neighborhood? Uh, I need to tell somebody here, just hold on. Yes, oh God, uh, I know that you got the anointing. I know that God ready to move in your life and, and I know that God has already given you vision and dreams and he showed you what he's going to do in your life but now you are the second person yeah. 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 in a first Yes. Position. Oh God. Uh, somebody said well, well what do you mean pastor? Well, well David yeah. was anointed yeah. without the position but he had to wait for the person in the position to move out the way so he could get to where God wanted him to be. How far your neighbor? Let's say, neighbor, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to praise him. I'm going to sit here and thank him. I'm going to sit here because it's just a matter of time that God's going to move my barriers and I'm going to step into my power. But while he was waiting, how about your neighbor and say, You got to wait? Let me tell you why you got to wait, oh God. Let me tell you why you got to wait. You got to wait because you see, God don't follow nobody. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Oh, Pastor, I didn't want to go here, but listen, God don't follow nobody. God says, I've already set the end from the beginning. Yes. And I'm so much gone yeah. that I ain't got to change nothing. Yeah. So I don't have to follow nobody <laughs> in order to bless you. Oh God. I, I ain't got to do that. You see, sometimes we rub elbows with the wrong folk. And sometimes we, we want to get ahead of God. And sometimes we want to tell God what to do. But God says, you, you must remember, I don't serve you, you serve me. So all I need you to do is wait. And I'll flip the line around. I just need you to wait. Because there's a time coming that you won't be crying, that you won't be depressed, that you won't be discouraged because I am God and beside me I ain't got to ask nobody, I ain't got to have no committee meeting, I ain't got to get no boys to say okay, I'm God all by myself, somebody, give God praise in this house, for God is all by himself. Hop up your neighbor and say, tighten your wig. We're about to go a little higher. God, David now. David now was not like some of the so-called worshipers of today. David was not created from musical beats and melodies. David was not created from ceremonies and rituals. David was not created from the critique and ridicule of men. That's why these kind of worshipers that we got today cannot endure nothing. Because when the devil silences the beats, and when the devil silenced the melodies and they quit worshiping. When the ceremonies and rituals don't make sense to them anymore, they quit worshiping. When people are not pleased with their worship, they quit and go somewhere else. But when you are a 
worshiper molded by all of your experiences. You will worship any time. You will worship anywhere because your worship is not in your situation. Your worship is in your revelation because you already know that God's going to free you. It may look bad right now, but you got revelation that God is going to bless and deliver you. And it's just a matter of time that what God revealed will be manifested. Oh my God, I need to tell somebody why you're waiting praise, why you're waiting worship, because God is worth. was a real worshiper. Yes. You know, somebody said, oh man, God don't need to send pastor to do nothing else. Yes. David was a real worshiper even when he was wrong. Yes. Uh-oh, I'm gonna get us some theological trouble, Pastor, you got me? Even when he was wrong, he leaned on the worshiper in him. Because how many of you know that once worship is birthed in you, you might be kicking in with two chains, but God will come in with one chain and pull you back. Oh, I wish I had somebody. It was the worshiper in him that led him back to right relationship with God. Oh, I know, I know, I know you're wondering, can you worship when you're not in right relationship with God? Yes. Why? Because your worship to God speaks of the attributes of God, not your failures. Oh, God. And what worship will do is lead you to right relationship with God. Uh, let me prove it. When you read in your Bible, you will find many times where people came to Jesus and worship even though they were not in right relationship with him. But when they worshiped, their eyes were open and they saw Jesus for who he was. And that's what true worship is. Seeing the Lord for who he really is. And who he is is not a Affected by what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Glory be to God. He's still God when you live in wrong. He's still a healer when you get high. He's still a deliverer when you're walking in disobedience. Who God is is not affected by what you do, but you got to let worship bring you into the presence so that you may find grace for what you do. I find your neighbor to neighbor. I need to let worship lead me. Oh yeah, I know, I know. The problem is we're trying to lead worship. When God says I need worship to lead you, can I can I, can I step through the neighborhood? We come in the house of God, trying to lead worship. So if they don't play the song we want to hear, if it don't go the way we think it ought to go, because we want to lead worship. We tell worship, I'll catch you next Sunday. But when worship leaves you, it don't matter whether it's an old 100 or a new one. It don't matter because worship leaves you into the presence of God. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I could pray them last week for my car, I ought to be praying them this week for my calamity. I find your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to quit trying to lead worship and let worship lead me. Oh, God. In the background of the text, David was running for his life. 
And he ran to the enemy for help. He ran to the Philistines, the arch enemy of Israel, for help. David ran to Achish, king of Gath, and he was recognized as a great warrior by the people. Uh, I need somebody in here. Uh, listen, you two are known it to be to be secret. Ooh, that, that didn't hit nothing but no, but only the anointed folk know what I'm talking about. Uh, you two are knowing it to get over somewhere and hide. You two are knowing it to be trying to sneak in the back door. Oh no, because the anointing of God means the glory of God. And the people will see your glory and they'll see what God has done through your life even though you're trying to hide. I need to release somebody right now. Quit hiding and walk in your anointing. Quit taking the back seat when God wants you up front. I need somebody in here to tell somebody, talk about me all you want to, but I'm still anointed. He tried to hide it. But when he showed up, oh God, tell your neighbor, show up. When he showed up, they said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ain't this David? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ain't this the one that they had a song about? Can I tell you, you're really anointed when they write a song about you. Yeah. Isn't this the one that they were saying that did that Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his temple? I believe they kiss that this is the one that the mantle of God is on. I believe this is the one that's anointed warrior, king, and priest. I believe this is David. Because I know you ain't never met him, but I've seen his work. I've seen what God has done through him, and he is the one. But notice, as anointed as David was, when he got in trouble, Ah. He got afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's why you can't tell me mm. that if I got faith, yeah. I don't have to deal with fear. Yeah. Because you can't be anointed without faith. That's right. But even though you're anointed, you sometimes fear. That's right. That's right. And the Bible said that he feared because he knew Achish would kill him. So here's what David did. He pretended yeah. to be crazy. Yeah. Ooh, I need to tell somebody, ain't nobody scared of you. Because we know you pretending. You ain't that bad. You ain't that strong. You just pretending. Because I remember last year when the devil slapped you in the head. You were over somewhere in a cave crying for God to come. Which I had the people of God quit pretending in the presence of your God and start walking in your anointing. The Bible said that he pretended to be crazy, foaming at the mouth, and he put on such a show that Achis dismissed, dismissed him and let him go, and he retreated to the cave of Adullam. Now David took matters in his own hand and pretended out of fear. When he could have been delivered by faith. Oh yeah. You got to, you got to hear what I'm saying. He could have been delivered by faith in God. But he pretended out of fear. But before you get religious on David. There are some folk. That are pretending out of fear. Rather than being delivered by faith. Pretending to be holy. Because they feel the church. Will find out who they are. Pretending to be a worshiper. Because they fear of being an outcast among the people of God. Pretending to be something that you're not. For fear that you won't get what you need. But I need to tell somebody. Don't pretend. Believe. Because if you can believe it, you can have it. If you believe God can make you holy, you can be holy in him. If you believe God is to be worshipped and praised, you ain't going to let no devil in hell stop your praise. If you believe you are who 
You are by the grace of God and you believe that your God shall supply all your needs. You'll get what you need. There ain't no future in front, but there's a future in faith. And how find your neighbor and say, believe God. Oh, he's able. He is awesome. He, God is able to do it. I wish I had somebody in here that say, I just believe that no matter what I go through, he's able to bring me out of. I, just, I wish I had somebody in here that believes that no matter what the devil brings my way, I shall rise and fail and overcome. I wish I had somebody that believed it so much so that you start giving God praise even before you get it. David runs to the king and he's followed by 400 men who was his secret service like agents. And can I put a pin right here? Don't run after no pastor that won't worship. How can you get up here and teach worship when we don't ever see you do it? Worship should be dependent on whether you got a microphone in your hand or not. You want to worship God when, when you stand in before the people of God. But David was on the side of a mountain with some sheep sending love letters to God and praise, lifting up the name of God. Don't nobody respect your public praise when they know you ain't had no private one. I found your neighbor and said, don't front. <laughs> Praise him. Oh, God. They run now. And he's followed by 400 men who was his secret service like agents. And while in the security of the cave, David looks back over his life and the recent events and where he was in the moment. And the more David reflected, the more he brought, he brought to this declaration. And that is, I will bless the Lord at all times. When David looked back over his life, being overlooked by his father, being hunted by his king, fighting a bear and fighting a lion, battling a giant with a rag and a rock, the affair with Bathsheba, the turmoil in his house with his children, pretending to be crazy before Amalek, times of being wrong, times of being wayward, times of being struggled and stretched, and in all those times, God bless him, high five your neighbor, and say neighbor, he'll bless you anyway, and David concluded that I will bless him, because of all of the things that David had done, God continued to bless him, it was in David's experiences, he experienced God delivering him, he experienced God giving him the victory. When the devil came in like a flood, it was God that lifted up protection for him. David knew that if it had not been for the Lord that was on his side, and I wonder today, is there anybody here that would say, God has blessed me all the times in my life. He blessed me in my waywardness. He blessed me in my disobedience. He kept me so that I would not let go. Oh, there's somebody in the house today to say, Lord, I may not have a car yet, but you've given me more than a car. I may not have a house yet, but you've given me more than a house. You kept me alive when the devil was trying to kill me. You gave me joy in the midst of sorrow. You turned my darkness in the day. And I gotta give you praise. I'm your neighbor. 
question right there. I'm going to praise you for what you've done. But I'm going to be thankful for your mercies. But what do you mean? He means I know you didn't have to do it. I know I didn't deserve it. I know you didn't have to stop that lying. You didn't have to stop that prayer. You could have killed me. You could have allowed the enemy to take me out. But I heard Paul say two words. But God, I found your neighbor. They say neighbor. But God, I should have been dead. But God, I should be crazy. But God, I should be somewhere on the street. But God, who is rich in mercy, he wouldn't let it kill me. He wouldn't let it take me out. Oh, sure heard somebody in here that would say, Lord, it was you. It wasn't my mama. It wasn't my daddy. It wasn't that Negro. It was you, God. You blessed me. You kept me. You made a way. So David said, when I look back over my life, there was never a time that God didn't bless me. And I need somebody in this place to know there was never a time that God in that blessing. I heard the Bible say that you are blessed in the sin. You are blessed in the fear. You are blessed when you come. And you are blessed when you go. There's never a time that God ain't bless you. So if there's never a time that God ain't bless you, you ought to bless the Lord at all times. Oh God, but can I tell you something? Don't just praise the blessing, but praise the blesser. Because if it had been for God, you wouldn't have the blessing. And let his praise continually be in your mouth. Divorce your feelings and bless him. Subdue your thoughts and bless him. Crucify your flesh and bless him. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I remember. I remember when I called him, he answered. What a blessing. I remember when I trusted him and he came through. What a blessing. I remember when I put my faith in him and he did it. What a blessing. Now I know I'm not by myself, but I find your neighbor that say, neighbor, I got an invitation that I need to deliver. I find your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I got an invitation that I need to deliver. Mr. Douglas, I got an invitation. I'm going to hand deliver it. Now here's the invitation. And the invitation says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Touch your neighbor. And say, neighbor, I'm not the only one that he made a hurry out of no way for. I'm not the only one Stop the attack of the enemy. I'm not the only one. I'm talking to somebody. You need to say, oh, oh, magnify the Lord. 
she used to see. And they got these glasses, Brother Lyle. That they say it will magnify what you're looking at. Oh, I better go see. In reality, it's the same side. But when you look through them glasses, it gets bitter. I love your name and say neighbor. In reality, I'm still hurting. In reality, I still got pain. Oh, but when I magnify him, oh, he gets bigger than my problem. He gets bigger than my struggle. He gets bigger. Is there anybody in here that will make him bigger? Now somebody came in here today and you expected to see Pastor Dale. Somebody now, I'm not talking about half members. Because you know your pastor is a worshiper. But somebody came in here, well, I just heard that his sister passed away. And I know Pastor loved his sister. And I know Pastor was trying to do everything he and Sister Ross. It was so funny, y'all, and I got to testify. Friday night, I'm there at the house, and I got a phone call. Good friend of mine, how many of you know? That God knows who to send you. Good friend of mine, he called me. He said, look, I had not talked to him about anything that was going on. He said, Edward, see, your real friends are not hindered by a title. Somebody gonna get it in a minute. He said, Edward, God told me to tell you that he knows how you feel. God knows that there was nothing else you could have done to stop what happened. Yeah. Then he gave me a word from my wife. He said, Go tell she. <sighs> tell her that God knows. Yeah. That she did stuff she ain't getting credit for. Come on. But God saw. God, I need to tell somebody, don't you get this courage. said, so brother, I'm calling you to speak into you, for God said, I know, <laughs> I know your labor, I know how you feel, but I have not changed my Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. 
But while I'm going through, God said, I said a word that would lift. When I talked to him, I, I was kind of, yeah, okay, man, I really thank you. Praise the Lord, I thank you. Because I was, I, was, I was talking out of my brokenness. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this morning, he called back. He said, man, I just called. God told me to call you. And I said, brother, it's all. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear me. It's all good. He said, well, he said, well, well, let me just share this with you. He said, man, look, God wants you to go forward and operate in your anointing. I said, listen, brother, wait a minute. How you doing? He said, man, I'm, I'm okay. I said, well, let me tell you what God told me to tell you. God told me to tell you because you've been obedient to me. Yeah. And because you spoke a word that was uncomfortable to a person that you're close to, God said, now, the, 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 the keys of the kingdom, he said, it's time for you to use one of them. I said, he said, it's time for you to use one of them because some devil has locked up some stuff. And God is saying that you use that key in the place where I want you to use it. That the devil are coming off the door and the door is going to swing open in your favor. And I heard on the There's a blessing in every trial. There's a blessing in every struggle. There's a blessing in everything. 